this whole question that we are seeing here it is just to prove everything that we have here is a proof we're supposed to prove that a b is parallel to c d that is the condition of our question how is this possible all right so in your mathematics for grade 10, what you need is to understand the theorems of uh, your Euclidean geometry, as I stated on the introduction, so that you at least know the basics of your parallel lines, this and that. So we are given in the tri in the diagram, CD is parallel. This one you're told that is parallel. CD, where is our CD? Uh, you're going to consider from the point C. All right, guys, you see now the way that they are writing this. This is C, but okay, this is a C. C to D and E to F. These two, they are parallel. These ones, we are told that they are parallel. So meaning to say we can use anything about parallel lines because we are told anything that we know. Is it of alternate angles? Is it corresponding angles? Is it for interior angles, vertically opposite angles? So what is it that we can use from there? From this part that we are told that these two, they are parallel. We can see that here we are formulating a Z, alternate angles, a Z. To remember what we have about these, these two angles, they must be equal. They are alternate angles. So meaning to say in this part that we are seeing, our angle X is equal to 28 degrees. See where the X is. This is our X here. This is where our X is. So X is equal to what? 28 degrees. We are talking about what? Alternate, alternate angles. That is alternate to these 28 degrees. So these two, they are equal. So X is equal to 28 degrees. But I want you to be careful how this is given before. Are you seeing the 160 degrees? It is the wall of this angle. Let's go back here. Let's go back here. 160 degrees is BDE. BDE. From B to D to E. That is the wall of this one. Check, check where it is covering. I want you to be careful about this one. This one. From B to D. To e, the wall of this one, it means it is also covering up. It is also taking up this X. The X is also involved in this 116 degrees. It, in, in this 160 degrees. X is also there, which is this uh, 28 degrees. So the question is, for us to prove that these two lines are parallel, we are supposed to use a concept of any parallel lines. So let's say we can calculate this angle D1 because the combination of what we are seeing of this 160 degrees, it is like this. This X that we are seeing here and also the angle D1 that we are seeing here, together they must add up to 160 degrees. And we have got our angle X. Remember, we said our angle X is 28 plus this angle D1. This is going to be 160 degrees. So you can transpose the 28. We are now solving an equation. So that will be a negative after uh, jumping this equal sign. Remember, the moment that you get it to the other side of the equation, the sign changes. So that will be a minus on this side. So you're going to subtract uh, the 28 degrees on the right-hand side. So that means we are having 132 degrees as our angle D1, meaning this angle here, D1, D1 is this part. This is the part that I'm referring to on our diagram, this one. This is our D1, the part of this angle, the piece of this angle, this one. This is the one that we calculated and it's 132 degrees. This is 132 degrees. So now that there is this angle here that is inside of these two, because remember, the question is we are supposed to prove, remember, that A, B, and C, D are parallel. So the question is if, let's say these two are parallel, what is that we know? We know that 
core interior angles, these angles inside of parallel lines, they are supposed to add up to 180. So if I am to add the angle D1 and this angle B here, I'm supposed to obtain 180 from the core interior angles. If not, then these lines are not parallel. They are not. So in this case, we want to prove, okay, so let us add angle B plus angle D1 must be 180 degrees. So what are we going to have? Angle B is 48 degrees plus angle D1, which we calculated here, this is 132 degrees. So if you are to add these two, we are obtaining 180 degrees. By obtaining 180 degrees from these two angles, it's not just ordinary, no. It's impossible that you add these two angles you get 180 degrees. On a normal line, it does not exist like that. It can only exist if these two lines are parallel. Not all lines can do that. Not every line can do that. No. It's only if the lines are parallel. So therefore, this is an indication that AB is parallel to what? To CD. We are considering the idea of the core interior angles there. Core interior angles are supplementary. Core interior angles are supplementary. That is what we know from our from our parallel lines. If it was a consideration that you add these two angles, then you obtain something that is not 180. It means the lines are not parallel. The core interior angles is not active. It's not there. But these ones, they are supplementary. If we add these two angles, which we are referring as the core interior, they add up to 180 degrees. So therefore, these two lines automatically will be parallel because it is maintaining a property of what? What parallel line do? What parallel lines do? So it can be of alternate angles. You do not know what you'll be having according to your diagram, but according to this one, it work with them, this part. In other cases, you prove from alternate angles. In other cases, you prove from what corresponding angles. You work with the diagram that you're given. That is why you need to know your introductions. Okay, so we shall have more questions of this nature on this same uh, channel till we meet again.